Hello out there. This is Pamela Fagan Hutchins and you have found Wine Women in Writing. Whether it's Facebook Live version or whether you're hearing this at a later date on the podcast in one of the 75 countries that it broadcasts to or watching the video on YouTube, I'm glad to have you. Fellow readers and uh, fellow listeners and watchers of podcasts slash videocasts, this show tends to focus on female writers who um, bring to life amazing, complex, authentic female characters in their fiction and today is going to be no exception so hold on to that thought because I'm going to be talking to the two women that you see I guess when I point this way for those that see it on video I'm actually pointing the wrong way so this way <laughs> and this way the women that are with me on this screen um, and before we get out there and do that I wanted to remind you that you can always go and see what shows are currently running and um, you can pre-read for so you can book club along with me by going out to my website and taking a look and seeing the books that are um, from these authors and also this is really boring but you know I have to do it this is a copyrighted and solely owned production of authors on the air global radio network all hail the queen of our podcasting universe, Pam Stack, without whom there would be no um, authors on the air shows like Wine, Women, and Writing. So with no further ado, other than um, a huge shout out and thank you to you guys who helped me take switch back to number 25 paid on Kindle and hold it there um, this month. It's been a fantastic ride. And if you haven't checked the book out yet, um, what are you waiting for? So go give it a shot. It's my new Patrick Flint series. So now enough of that junk. Let's do the good stuff, which is talk to my guest today. So over here to my your left, my right, but actually looks like my left, is Amy Van Zandt, and below me is Colleen Mooney. Hi, ladies. Welcome to the show. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. So um, these two amazing authors are here as part of a group that has put a box set together, an incredible deal box set for readers called Summer Snoops Down Under. And I'm going to talk to them about that in just a minute. But first, I want to I want to know about where you're coming from and what you're up to. And I'm going to start below me with Colleen. Colleen, where are you broadcasting from today? Well, I'm in Navarre Beach, Florida today, but I live in New Orleans. And we just had to get a, take a break. So we came over here for a few days to spend with my nephew and his little boy. So that was a lot of fun. That is fun. I mean, New Orleans is fun anytime, but I, I can understand that after a couple of months of being in lockdown in New Orleans, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> All the fun that we get to do is not happening, so it's a whole lot less fun there right now. No kidding. No kidding. That is quite a change from New Orleans, because if there's ever a place that isn't socially distant, <laughs> it's New Orleans. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All of the memories that nobody wants anyone else to talk about usually have happened in Las Vegas or New Orleans. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Amy, where are you coming uh, from today? I'm in my backyard in Jupiter, Florida. I have a. Okay, so you guys. You guys are both in Florida, which is kind of fortuitous. How far away is Jupiter from. Um, what was, what was it you said, Colleen? I mean, where are you? Panhandle, Navarre Beach, close to Pensacola. Yeah, we're probably 10 okay. hours away. It's a big state. <laughs> yeah, it's it's long and skinny. We have kids that live there, and it always sounds like it's going to be a great idea. You know, go visit one, you'll see the other. No, never works out. Our kids that did live there, they've left now. And, um, and so you guys are both contributors to this box set and we didn't talk about this ahead of time so i'm going to i'm going to ask one of you to tell us a little bit about the box set and the other can maybe tell us about the charity the box set benefits so somebody take it away with uh, a little bit about summer snoops down under you'll do the charity um well basically it's uh mostly 
I think the first books in series, but there's also some um, some novellas and some other books, all bundled into one giant bundle. Um, and it's got hold on, I can I don't have all the names off the top of my head, but there's a lot of us, um, and all of them, <laughs> of them good. Um, there's uh, I know there's Summer Prescott and me, of course, and Colleen, and there is Diane Harmon, Sam Cheever, Fiona Quinn, Cindy Bell, J.A. Whiting, Kathy Daly, and Tonya Caps, and Judith Lucci. Judith. So readers are getting like 10 books in one or something close to that. It's an incredible deal. And they're all cozy mysteries, pretty much. Well, 12. Oh. 12. 12 of them. That's even better. And thematically, I'm guessing from the down under, is there a link to uh, to Australia <laughs> in the books or is is that just um, in the name? No, that we've done this a few times together um, in various ways. Sometimes they were new stories, sometimes uh, other things, but there's no no theme to them that ties the actual stories together. It's just uh, that this is the charity we picked this time. Uh, okay, cool. And, and of course, that brings us to Colleen and the charity, because that very definitely has a down under tie. Yes. Well, we selected a charity from Australia. Wildfires were devastating so many animals and rescue efforts down there. So we selected Wildlife Victoria that rescues all animals in Australia. And that's quite an undertaking because there's like 200,000 species in Australia. There's quite a few and some are endangered, but, and most people think of the koala and the kangaroo and that's about it. But there's a ton of species in Australia. Um, actually the dingo, the wombats, which are wildlife Victoria's little logo symbols that like little looks like a little hedgehog and they're so cute. I've just, I've just come, become so attached to them. So they do a lot of um, rescue efforts on all animals and they've been doubly hit with the virus. So their volunteer groups are being shrunk while their efforts are being demanded more of. So um, that's why we selected them. And uh, they have a website and they, Facebook page and Instagram if you want to check it out. And they post some amazing pictures of animals on there. Many I think rescued. I think that I've heard before that there are species that exist in Australia that don't exist anywhere else in the world. I mean, there are animals there that are endangered and unique and have to be protected there if we want to save them at all. Right. There's a couple of um, varieties of uh, giant lizards that are indigenous to there and um, what was that other lizard that oh the thorny dragon lizard which I mean not if they're not warm and fuzzy but they are endangered and they're an interesting unique to Australia the dingo is pretty indigenous there and that that animal was introduced to Australia I think 5,000 years ago they it's all the mammals that are having the most um, problems with the rescue effort because they some of them can escape but a lot of them can't they're staying in their areas and even if they do escape now their food source has been removed it's unbelievable to think too about being on an island where you know you can escape but you can only go so far and that it's hard to get resources there you know a big ocean to cross it's as like as you said that the volunteers are decimated so it's a great great charity to have um, picked for this box set to benefit and with the box set have either of you been involved with efforts like this before with authors coming together to support a charity by contributing their writing to an effort? Well, this is our third effort together, I think, Amy. I know we started Summer Snoops three box sets ago. This is our third one. Mm -hmm. And we've always picked an animal charity, sometimes um, shelters, but um, we all write cozy mystery and we all have pets or and animals in our stories. So that makes us connect to the animal charity uh, efforts that much more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, to, to switch between you for just a second, um, Amy, you write cozy mysteries. When you're not writing cozy mysteries that you donate to box sets with other author authors to help animal charities, what are you writing? Um, 
I have a urban fantasy series um, that has about 10 books in it, the Kilty series, which is about, I, I kind of flipped Outlander around. This is a, a Scotland, a, a Highlander who comes from ancient Scotland to modern day LA. Very and cool. He's super excited to be here because the thing that used to bother me about Outlander, because my, my mom loves it, is she's watching the television vision show and so I checked it out and I was like these people never take baths you know there's all this <laughs> going on. They're, they're rolling around in the sheets every five seconds and they're filthy so uh, you know what if this would be a lot sexier if he came here and then so I had him come here and because I generally write comedies I have him get obsessed with bath products so he, he, he loves <laughs> I'm writing that. a new series for Jupiter um, that's gonna it's it's gonna be a little less cozy-ish um, but not not anything too horrific or anything like that, but it's gonna take place in, in Jupiter. I love that. I, I absolutely think that every time I watch Outlander is, God, I bet he stinks. <laughs> He's really cute, but God, I bet he stinks. So good for you. <laughs> I love that. Um, and so if you had to pick a favorite child, if it was gonna be writing cozies or if it was going to be these uh, time traveling rom-coms, what is, what's your most fun thing to write? I, I think the new series is gonna be kind of the combination of everything. There's not gonna be any um, fantasy so much, but it's going to be, I really like writing the cozies, but I, I'd like to make them just a little less fluffy, if that makes any sense. So. It does, it does. <laughs> I, um, I started out um, writing mysteries that attracted a lot of cozy readers, but I got grittier as time went on. And it was an interesting transition because I started liking writing them a lot more. I mm -hmm. did have some very angry readers. <laughs> There's my husband, everybody wave. Um, <laughs> That has never happened in a hundred podcasts before, but apparently the dog wants out. So all hail, I have a blind Boston Terrier and he has a porch that he likes to sit on. And if he's not on that porch, the whole entire house is his captive. So thank you, honey. Um, Usually he's snoring right beside me. So but one of these days I'm going to have to write a, a children's series about a blind Boston Terrier that um, rules his kingdom like a little dictator. It will be nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Colleen, tell me about your writing outside of Summer Snoops and, and what it is that readers have grown to love from you. Well, I write a series set in New Orleans called the New Orleans Go Cup Chronicles. And my lead character is named Brandy Alexander. <laughs> I actually knew someone named Brandy Alexander years ago. And it's all set in New Orleans. It's cozy. I think I'm probably a little less fluffy than most cozies. And I enjoy writing that. I don't really want to write about any graphic sex or violence. Although a lot of my fans ask for a little more romance in my stories. There's a little sprinkle of it, but it's not... It's, it's not the focus. So um, that, you know, my stories are all about something that's happened in New Orleans and I take and fictionalize it. One of mine, uh, drive through Murder, actually, I got the idea from a fella who did climb through the drive-up window and rob the place, murdered somebody, and climbed back out. So oh who does that? <laughs> but only in Louisiana. Anna, I love the whole Go Cup thing. I mean, my college years were all about when is there going to be a football game in Louisiana so we can do the drive throughs you know? That was the big that was the big thing, you know, the little paper on the end of the straw so that it wasn't an open container. I don't know if they still do that, but yeah. it was it was really fun. <laughs> yes, they do still do that. Um, <laughs> the drive through daiquiris that are most popular, I think, for us. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty incredible to think that Louisiana is is basically a separate country from the United <laughs> States. It's just like an island in the middle of the United States. And I think of New Orleans as being separate from the rest of the state. <laughs> we tend mm -hmm. to a little bit stand apart. I love the setting of New Orleans for mysteries. It's got such um, beauty and decay. It's got exotic and it's got filthy you know it's it's everything all at once it is and it's a lot of fun to try and pick some of that and use some of my 
memories because I was born and raised in New Orleans. So growing up there, my experiences with some local traditions are rather unique compared to what other writers write about when they write New Orleans. And so my fans like that. I get a lot of them saying, oh, I forgot about that place. And that's right, we do that there. And so that's rewarding for me is when I get somebody who said, I moved away, but I like to read your books because it reminds me of home. I think that's awesome. Now, if someone picks up a copy of Summer Snoops, Colleen, what are they going to get from you in the box set? Will it be a little bit of the to-go cup um, world? Yes, it will. Uh, my book, I put my, um, I think it's the sixth book in there, Politicians, Potholes, and Pralines, is the book I have in <laughs> the <Thomas> Snoops. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all that's in there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And um, and so with respect to you mentioned earlier that, that this is the third summer snoops. Um, is there going to be a number four? And if so, do you think you'll be involved with it? Well, Amy, I'll ask you. Um, <laughs> now, it's a little soon. It's like right after you have a child. You really have a problem. <laughs> so yeah. I'm sure we will because we every time we finished one we said we're never doing this again and then a few months go by and said and someone calls judith me or amy or someone says hey y'all want to do another snoops and we do so i think we will and we like to do it for the charities it's a great win-win for everybody yes Just it is. Enough, they pull me back in <laughs> <laughs> you and and your contribution, we talked about, you know, dirty versus clean Highlanders, but that's not what's in Summer Snoops with you, right? It's your Pineapple Port no, series. My pineapple Port series is, is also, a, like like you said, a cozy-ish. It's, yeah. it's not as cozy as some cozies, but it's still cozy. So I have book one in this one. It's it's interesting how the definition of cozy is evolving. And, you know, there's there's all different subgenres within cozy now as you go from the spectrum of a very sweet and clean or fluffy through a, a little more and a little more gritty. So it's nice, too, that you guys have, while staying within the cozy genre, have a, a, a range that's represented within the set to appeal to a number of different readers. It sounds like there's going to be something for everyone. Yeah, there should be. And now the, the release date is coming up um, this summer, but it's available for pre-order, yes, now? Yes, we are on pre-order now. The release date is July 28th, and we'll have a release week Facebook party we're planning at this point, assuming that Facebook continues to cooperate. We had a few problems with one last night with too many re responses, and then they block you. You're kidding. No, that's like doing? that's like should be the opposite of what they are doing, you know. Especially right now, where we're trying to achieve some level of interactivity while being so far apart, you think they would encourage it? Yes, you would. What's wrong with you, yeah, Shame on you, uh, Zuckerman. Stop <laughs> this. Um, so, um, with the the box set, uh, it's also at a pretty attractive price, right? Because you're trying to encourage volume so that people will support the charity. Right. right. What is it? Uh, what's the what's the box set price? Amy, you want to take it? Oh, <laughs> to remember. I, I'm like looking I, at my browser, going, "Can I open that well, it's and still support an internet connection?" Four ninety nine. Oh, that's fantastic! So twelve books for a really good price, supporting a really good cause, and I think I heard there's also some giveaways going on right now. Oh, yep, there are. Um, you can win a Kindle by signing up, and the sign-in for that is right at the top of the website at uh, summersnoops.com. So you can enter for that. And then I think in a couple days, there's another uh, raffle copter. We had one already, and that ended. So we've got another going, and I think that one has both cash and uh, obviously some, some Summer Snoops books on the line. So summersnoops.com sounds like something people should bookmark because the contests are ongoing. There's just one after another leading up to the release. Yep. So pretty much you can get 12 books for a really good price, support a charity and win a bunch of stuff and have fun. And I just 
you know, I don't, I just don't see a downside here, folks. <laughs> And and having been involved with some of the um, authors in this box set before, I can tell you, really, really good stories. Very much worth um, your time to check them all out. And with that, I'm going to uh, remind you guys that if you want to find out about the guests for the upcoming weeks, you need to go out to my website, PamelaFaganHutchins.com, where you can download the book, read ahead, be prepared for the show. If while you're there, you want to download some of my books, it's not going to hurt my feelings at all. We've got uh, all of the eBooks in Kindle Unlimited where you can read for free if you want to. And you can also buy them the old fashioned way where you pay actual cash money for them. That doesn't hurt my feelings either. If you are looking, I get a lot of authors that watch the show. I have one more spot left in my Indie Publishing Success Retreat, June 24th to 26th. You can also find that out at the website. But in the meantime, your assignment is to go to summersnoops.com. And at summersnoops.com, what I'm going to want you to do is pre-order your own copy so you can get the 12 novels and support wildlife in Australia who are suffering from the wildfires. And also, be sure you sign up for those contests and look for the various events they're going to be holding on Facebook because these multi-author um, these multi-author box sets are a ton of fun, and I know you're going to want to be involved. Amy and Colleen, thank you guys so much for being on the show today. I hope this is a great success for all of you guys. Thank you, thank you for having me. Very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. And all of you out there, have a great week and go read you a great book. <laughs>